Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Wednesday, February 23rd, 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. The models are in, and it's a sin. Winter is going to stick around through spring. Ding, ding. And that's the big story. Locations in the last 24 hours, hundreds of record lows dropping in the Northwest. Keep calm. It is boom time. Record low temperatures dropping like hotcakes west of the Mississippi. Take a look. Hundreds of record lows popping across dozens of states in the last 24 hours. Hours of powers. This week's snowfall has been record-breaking in Michigan's UP as well. Not only cold, but record snow. Marquette, Michigan. It has been a record-breaking couple of days in Michigan's Upper P. According to the National Weather Service in Marquette, several snowfall and precipitation records were shattered on Monday and Tuesday. Most notably, the 21.6 inches of snow on Tuesday, February 22nd. It's the most snowfall for a February day ever in the Bureau's history, dating back to 1961. How fun. The snowfall also broke a record 19.4 inches in the area received on February 26, 2002. The previous record for snowfall on February 22nd was just 7.5 inches. Hello. So big numbers and big records toppling in the UFP. I didn't know that was an area where you could break records. Now storm socks Duluth crashes mount as snow piles up in the Twin Cities. We're talking Minneapolis, St. Paul, and several suburbs have declared snow emergencies. This guy looks stoked. Back-to-back -back winter storms battered a large swath of Minnesota for two days have left thousands digging out from a foot or more of snow, particularly in Duluth, where more than 17 inches of snow had piled up Monday on Park Point and just south of downtown. The northern Minnesota city and towns along the North Shore were also bracing for another five to seven inches of snow Tuesday before the twin storms were set to wind down early Wednesday. Now, cold temps break records in Denver. Avalanche warnings issued for Colorado mountains. Denver has been, well, it's so woke, it's disgusting, but they've been screaming and clamoring about how warm it is and global warming, this and that, and they, they're breaking record after record. Record snow now, record cold. The cold weather this week has broke two Denver records that have stood for more than 100 years. And it will stick around for the next couple of days. Denver set a new record low maximum temperature for February 22nd of just 8 degrees, breaking the old record of 13 by a nickel. And that was set in 1913. Now, Wednesday's low temperature of minus 7 broke the old record for February 23rd of minus 4, going all the way back to 1899. That is chilly. Significant snow to hit Massachusetts after the global warmest. Shut up, Al. Get in your home. After record high temperatures hit, significant snow and record snow could hit Massachusetts. After record warmth, snowstorm could hit Maine. Also, it's insane. And after record breaking temps, we could see 6 to 12 inches of snow in the Boston area. Hello. Could be another record. Let's check the models. I love it when a plan comes together. Al's being silent. All right, let's walk the models through. Here is your February 23rd. And you can see that system is starting to fire up in Arkansas, just where we said it was days ago. And that's going to start moving east. But not after the system here in the Four Corners drops more snow uh, down in the Four Corners region, including western New Mexico and eastern and southern Arizona. Now take a look up in the Cascades, what happens as this st storm moves east, another storm dumps down into the Cascades. Now the eastern storm is going to pick up speed on Friday. This is your Friday right here. We're going to have heavy snow in southern Missouri, southern Illinois, southern Indiana, and moving into Ohio. Ohio could be seeing some significant totals as well as eastern Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey, the Catskill region, Barrie. Most of Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, hello, southern New Hampshire, southern uh, Vermont. It's insane. It's going to be quite a significant event for uh, the end of February. And then that storm's going to start to dump down heavy totals into the Cascades through the end of March. See it happening here. And then we have the first week of March blizzards to contend with. Looks like maybe another northeaster. Northeast storm through an Alberta clipper here, bringing some heavy snow to the ski regions there. And then a southern storm bringing more snow to Pennsylvania, maybe uh, mid-Appalachians. We'll have to see. These are so far out that, well, 
March is looking quite snowy in the east. <laughs> Winter storm to impact central and eastern U.S. Heavy rain from Arkansas into the Ohio Valley. Currently, a variety of winter weather hazards will impact the southern plains into the Ohio Valley through Thursday night and the northeast mid-Atlantic Thursday night through Friday. Damaging ice accumulations may cause power outages, tree damage, and dangerous travel from north Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, through the mid-Mississippi Valley. Heavy rain may cause flooding in parts of the lower Mississippi, Tennessee, and Ohio's. We have winter storm watches and warnings throughout the Midwest, all the way down through the south, Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, going all the way down towards Brownsville. Hard freeze warnings all the way down through uh, Southern California, so in the foothills of the Sierras. Hard freeze all the way up in the northeast and flash flood warnings. Wow, take a look down here through the Ohio River Valley into West Virginia, Kentucky, through the, uh, all the way to the Mississippi. So click on your county if you're worried about what's happening. Clearly. Japanese ski resort shuts down lifts due to too much snow. They've gotten so much snow, the snow has met, met the lifts. And they can't even turn them on. That is some insane amounts of snow. The region has been buried in over 700 inches of primo global warming goodness. Shut up, Al. He doesn't believe it. He says we're making it up. But we, we can't make this up. There's actually a video. So let's click over to the video here on the tweet box. Oh, it wasn't even the tweeter. It was the fake book. And it's just a picture. Boiled again. Now, China's gas prices soar to record highs as cold wave drain supplies. Summer chills strike Tasmania and hundreds of low temperatures fall across the U.S. We showed you um, that graphic in the opening picture here. Take a look at Northern Mountains area of Gongong, China. The winter is particularly cold south of China, experiencing a cold wave for over a month. And snow in Fujian province, South China today for the first time in over a decade. Some friends have been here 16 years or more and have never seen snow in Fujian. It's a subtropical climate, a very odd occurrence in the Fujian, Fujian province. I love saying that. Say it with me, Fujian. Now, summer chill strikes Tasmania. Cap Allen's inbox, inbox is full of anecdotal reports that Australia is experiencing an unusually nippy summer. Well, I hope you have the right t-shirt on. Summer cold spell in hashtag Tasmania. The little town of Liawani, located 155 meters, it'll drop to minus 3.5 C on the 22nd of February. That's chilly. Brrr! Australia's beginning to cool in line with the rest of the planet. The data clearly shows that yet government agencies such as the bomb, which is full of, well, bomb, continue to do everything in their power to skew the stats. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Willie Soon, a good friend of mine and one of the top climatologists in the world, emailed me earlier today and said I had to share some a press release that they just got out here. So we're going to get that to you in just a moment. I think it might be coming up in just a few minutes. Seismic update. Let's start with the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. We've titillated you with this site before, and many people don't know how easy it is to monitor volcanic threats in our region. And, well, you can see Mount St. Helens has been on quite a flurry for the last 30 days. And has been there has been a lull for about four days, but an uptick. And, well, more earthquakes have been occurring. And let's just get you some higher resolution pictures here of the region. That's the region the Pacific Seismic Network covers. And Rainier's up here and near Olympia. And you can see Mount St. Helens down here. You can see both of these mountains from either of the mountains. I've been throughout this region. It is gorgeous. So if you have a chance to get out there, I implore you to get out there. But what we're looking at now is Mount St. Helens seismic swarm. It has been decreasing, and that's good news. But what it means is that what has happened over the last month is an emplacement of magma under Mount St. Helens. So if we have some more space weather, potentially along KP0 time, this volcano may rapidly awaken. So we're going to keep a close eye on that. And you can do the same here at the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. We'll leave you links below. Ho, ho. Worldwide seismic update. No quakes of note. We have some interesting 5.1 here in Japan up at the surface. Nothing significant. 
potentially some blood echoes here. No, that's at the surface. Blood echo there, 4.4. The surface expression, 4.2 potentially. And nothing significant going on here. Oh, hello! 5.5. 26 kilometers west-southwest of Santa Rosa de Ser in Colombia. I bet you the cocaine is shaking out there. <laughs> now, Worldwide Volcano News Update. Barda Bunga Volcano. We reported on this the other day. I hope you watch all of our videos because you'd be up to speed. But now, 24 hours after we were the first to report it in the entire fucking world, others are picking up what we've put down. Barda Bunga Volcano, a 4.9 earthquake. Continuous inflation since 2015. What does it mean? It means that this volcano will erupt. Guaranteed. When? It's anyone's guess. But we've had quite a big spike up here in activity in a new 4.9. And it looks like an overall trend upwards in the last year of seismicity. But according to Christian Jonstitta from the Iceland Met Office, reported on her Twitter account that a volcano tectonic earthquake with magnitude 4.9 occurred beneath the caldera, which we reported on two days ago. GPS, tiltimeter, and all seismic data confirm that the volcano continues to inflate since 2015, and such ground deformation episodes are nothing unusual and can vary for decades without eruption. Or not! That's what they left out. So, I added the or not. Now, White Island Volcano in New Zealand took the flesh off of many people that are still alive, is emitting ash, well, and creating fear, I'm sure, if they're watching this. Geysering activity form, mud pit crater, and the the whole toxic steaming hellhole, well, probably never should have had tourists there to begin with. You with me? Positive things. Ding dings. Tiny nano. Shut up, Al. Tiny nanosat aims to spot volcanic eruptions from space before they happen. And are you hungry? Get your nachos because nachos. Flew to space aboard the 17th Cygnus resupply mission for the space station on Saturday, February 19th, after it ejected the package before it re uh, reached its final destination. Now, nachos are delicious, especially with the right cheese and maybe some jalapenos, but a new sensor aims to send information about volcanic activity and air quality from a tiny satellite as swiftly as possible to help speed up the response to eruptions. And it's nachos! Nachos, which is an acronym for the Nanosat Atmospheric Chemistry Hyperspectral Observatory System. Say that five times fast. Or Nachos will fly roughly 300 miles, 480 kilometers in altitude above the Earth, skimming by all of the 694 CubeSats that Elon Musk has up there, and it will be a pinball game. Hello. Nachos flew to space on the 17th Cygnus Cargo resupply mission that arrived at the International Space Station Monday, February 21st. First, and interestingly enough, if all goes well, nachos could herald in the future of Earth-observing Earth systems tasked at looking for air quality changes in small regions, including cities, neighborhoods, or power plants. But the biggest thing it's up there for, once operational, the tiny satellite should be able to pick up gases in regions as small as 0.15 square miles. That's tiny. Teeny tiny. Roughly the size of the Mall of America in Minnesota, in case you didn't know that. Now, Nachos will thus be the smallest and highest resolution instrument looking for sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and other gases that can kiss our asses in the form of volcanic eruptions. So, a big boom. Well, to space science, as we get a new tiny microsat that could potentially save our... <whistles> Not from Hunga Tonga, though. Blue Bob. Near Iceland could slow glacial melting until 2015. Now, the Blue Blob near Iceland baffles scientists. And it could slow glacial melting until 2050. Well, what about global warming? How is that even possible? Now, the new study published in the Geophysical Research Letters used climate models and other bullshit and field observations to show that the cold water patch chilled the air over Iceland sufficiently to slow ice loss starting in 2011. That's when the cooling began. Now, the model predicts cooler water will persist in the North Atlantic, sparing Iceland's glaciers until about 2050, when we're all dead. Well, thank God. Excellent scientists. Now, ocean and air temperatures are predicted to increase between 2050 and 2100, but not before then, leading to accelerated melting. These people have lost their minds. Absolutely lost their minds. 
Now listen to this. Nowhere on Earth has warmed as quickly as the Arctic. But recent studies report the area is warming four times faster than the global average. However, Iceland's glaciers steadily shrank from 95 to 2010, losing, according to them, 11 gigatons of ice. But starting in 2011, the speed of Iceland's melting slowed, resulting in about half as much ice loss, or about five gigatons. This trend was not seen nearby in larger glaciers in Greenland and Svalbard. But listen to this. Several researchers have proposed that the blue blob is part of the normal sea surface temperature variability in the Arctic. Wow! There, that's a scientific statement. Notably, especially cold winters in 2014 and 2015 led to record cooling. So we have record cooling during global warming, which caused an upwelling of cold, deep water, even as ocean temperatures around the region warmed due to global warming. So what they're saying in this paragraph is, especially record cold cooling was because of global warming. See how they did that? <laughs> Absolutely mind-boggling. Wow. Apparently, they didn't get the memo. Here is the graph. The only graph you need to see. This is NOAA and NCDC. This is the reported monthly temperatures and CO2 levels going back to 1895. Now, these are the accepted numbers of all climatologists worldwide. The red line is global temperature since 1895. The surface temperature, not the tropospheric one that Roy Spencer does, which gets him demonetized because he's full of shit. This is the actual one of the temperature of the surface of the earth in red. The red line is the temperature. Don't you see how we're burning up? Now, the dark black or navy blue dots, that's the CO2 concentration. And you can see here that in the 1950s, it rapidly started rising because of humans, which is going to kill us all because we're going to burn up. The only problem is there is no relationship to temperature and CO2 on the surface of the earth. But yet, not a single climatologist is willing to come on my show, any of you listening, to discuss this graph, which shows that, in fact, the last decade has been one of the coldest decades in all of modern history since the beginning of the global warming scare. And there is no connection between CO2 and temperature whatsoever. Temperature is the red line. CO2 is the blue line. And climatology, climatologists, global warmists claim that the blue the blue line here controls the red line. Can someone please explain to me the relationship here? Because I don't see it. And I've been a scientist for now going on four decades. All I hear are crickets. Now, Willie soon sent me this this morning, and this may be part of the problem. One of the top astrophysicists, physical scientists, and experimenters. Journal article writers, Willie really Soon, one of the top speakers worldwide. Everybody loves this guy. His entire group, and this is not one scientist, this is dozens and dozens of scientists worldwide. They found major problems that were identified in the data adjustments applied to a widely used global temperature data set. Now, this press release from their latest scientific article, Evaluation of the Homogenization Adjustments Applied to European Temperature Records in the Global Historical Climatology Network data set, which was recently published in the Scientific Journal of Atmosphere, is total bullshit. When they did their analysis, the summary of the new study on NOAA's temperature adjustments show less than 20% of NOAA's adjustments were actually associated with documented changes to the weather. That means 80% of NOAA's adjustments are bullshit. And only 17% of NOAA's adjustments were actually applied consistently to actual data changes. That's embarrassing. 
And now this paper is in a peer-reviewed journal that everyone can read. Guess what? No one's going to talk about it because there's a paywall and you have to get it and you have to report on it, just like I'm doing. So I'm going on a limb here because it's illegal. It's against policy on YouTube to even talk about the facts of science. And this is the newest study. And the newest study shows that NOAA's temperature adjustments are 80% lies or higher, period. Al's sucking his thumb right now. Now the lunar rover discovers mysterious glass spheres on the far side of the moon. No one has ever heard of this. Except the Apollo astronauts that went up to the moon to find glass spheres. Can you believe it's full circle? The disinformation campaign goes round and round and round. And, and in this article, they want you to believe that these pristine glass spheres that they're photographing on the surface of the moon are million, billions of years old. It's embarrassing. <laughs> now, what's not embarrassing is archaeologists discover a 9,000-year-old shrine in the Jordanian desert. And it has the same anthropomorphs carved into the rock as there are petroglyphs worldwide. The Tasmanian glyphs in Australia. Glyphs in northwestern Australia. Same glyphs. The glyphs in Sardinia. Same. The glyphs in the southwest. The same. Worldwide. The same information. And no, it's not a bunch of kids making graffiti in the desert. I tr Trust me on this one. And this has been picked up by dozens of news sources in the last 24 hours. What say you? Children's graffiti worldwide that are all exactly the same. From a group of humans that don't have written language. Yeah, that's what they do. Or did they see something so ominous in the night sky? that they recorded it like a giant penis with two eyeballs and a nose. And that's a boom. The knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. In a dystopian world where we leak you information because that's what we have to do. The money funders and the controllers of the narrative, they want to censor us. They want to censor everyone that's bringing the truth to the table. You need to decide. Stick with the winners. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Become a Patreon. Support our work. We're on dozens of platforms. We cannot be removed. We will always exist as long as the sun does not prevent it. Be safe. We love you. That's a boo. Mm -hmm.